In today's Nonsense Wars production, we look at one more weird power functions set, the We Do Robotics Construction set. 9580 came out in 2009 as an education exclusive with just 150 parts and a price tag of $130. Nominally much less than a $300 spike essentials, but perhaps not when accounting for inflation. We got ours new from eBay for a mere $75. Our set came in two boxes, a plastic locking tub in the usual education style, and a flimsy cardboard box with paper manuals. Opening the tub reveals a cardboard insert with a parts list and a clear plastic tray with the special parts. The tray has a part number stamped in one corner, but it does not indicate what to store in each section. Lifting the tray reveals two more bags of parts and a couple large ones. If LEGO had printed the instructions wider and shorter, they would have easily fit down there. Let's take a look at those special parts, starting with the USB hub. This is a 5x4 brick with two power functions connectors on top and a USB cable in the back. Where the top half joins the bottom half has a slope reminiscent of one of the power function's receivers. The hub also has pinholes where the receiver has them. The next special part is the tilt sensor. This is a 4x2 brick with cutouts in the sides suggesting the function. The brick does not have any other remarkable features, but the cable has a special PF connector that cannot stack additional PF connectors. The final special part is the motion sensor. This is another 4x2 brick, but with two lenses on the narrow end and some molding around them. Lego, or at least BrickLink, calls this a motion sensor, but it does more than that. It also has the special PF connector. There is technically a fourth special part, but it's just a vanilla Power Functions M motor, which is currently almost a $40 value on its own. The set does not really have any other special parts, though we do get a retro minifig torso and a rubber ExoForce hairpiece. We also get some older gears, like the crown or unreinforced eight tooth. The paper manuals come in roughly the same shape and size as the ones from the renewable energy add-on set, but the contents seem more logically arranged with each book covering three unique models. Nonetheless, these physical instructions proved largely redundant. Since the hub runs on USB power, it of course needs a computer with the WeDo application. Luckily, LEGO continues to make this software readily available, despite having released it more than 15 years ago. Also luckily, or perhaps by design, the app works on my current Windows 11 laptop, so we did not need to fish out the old Dell. The education website also has digital copies of all the instructions along with some other documentation. Very nice continued support overall. Opening the installed program gives us a blank screen with some tiles at the bottom, suspiciously similar to those found in Powered Up. 
We do does have some mini tutorials showing how to make and program some simple mechanisms, but we will skip these and go straight into a couple of the projects. The relevant menu is hidden behind a nondescript button in the upper left, which we had quite a hard time finding. We looked at three projects, starting with the alligator. Each project has a short CGI video brief, which is animated but not voiced. We also get a simple worded description and a third set of instructions, which have no animations or other features. After clicking through all the steps, we return to the programming screen, but this time we see a sample program at the top. We do has similar, though much fewer, coding blocks than the Powered Up app, but both systems have features that the other does not. For example, we do can take inputs from key presses, but Powered Up can take inputs from an on-screen UI. At any rate, the sample program runs the motor forward, plays a sound, and runs the motor backwards. Of course, the project suggests extensions, such as making the alligator motion activated rather than input activated. The relevant sample program waits for the triggering event, runs the same program as before, and returns to waiting. In these two sample programs, each block activates when the previous block completes. But what if we want to play sound while the motors move? The we do code actually has a way to spawn off threads. If we move the motor movements onto a new thread, they will run while the sound plays on the main thread. We wanted to save our program before moving on to another project, but we could not find a way to do so. This seems particularly strange because the app seems to have a fairly obvious way to open programs. Along the way, we discovered that the UI lets us comment our code using freeform speech bubbles. We would love to see a similar feature in something like Studio. Next, we looked at Big Bird, a simple project utilizing the tilt sensor. While the flavor videos don't have voices, they do have sound effects. The Big Bird has a mechanical and electronic effect. Pressing the tail flaps the wings and activates the tilt sensor, which triggers a sound. It's a cute, satisfying mechanism overall, but that's pretty much it. There are some extensions, but let's actually dive a bit deeper into how the sensors work. The panels in the upper left corner of the UI show the connected devices and their statuses. For example, we see a tilt sensor when we connect one, and we see the angle when we tilt it. In fact, if we return to the Big Bird program, we can change the angle at which the sensor triggers the sound. Each tilt direction also corresponds with a number, which we can display separately in the UI. The sensor nonetheless does not indicate the magnitude of tilt, only the direction. With that in mind, we looked at one more project, the sailboat. The base build is very simple. A crank rocks the boat, and the sample program varies the speed of the rocking. 
One suggested extension as a tilt sensor to place sounds, but we had a better idea. We added the tilt sensor as shown, but we slowed down the drivetrain a lot using the worm gear gearbox. We programmed the motors to run if the sensor tilts forward or backwards. Uh, this makes the boat level itself regardless of the angle of the base. The code blocks actually do not do this well. They have poor conditional language, and we have to run separate threads off of different triggers instead of making if statements. Displaying the sensor output in the UI really helps with debugging though. With this same program, we can also make a simple three-pole switch. Tilting this lever forward runs the motor one way, tilting it backward runs the motor the other way, and leaving it upright stops the motor. Let's change gears and look at the motion sensor. While they call it the motion sensor, we suspect it is some kind of light sensor. The UI indicator changes as something blocks more or less light, and the sensor also outputs the magnitude of whatever it detects as a number. We built a different kind of controller to demonstrate this functionality, speeding up and slowing down the motor according to the intensity detected. Unfortunately, we cannot use one sensor to control direction and the other sensor to control speed due to the two-port limitation. That being said, we can try to do something fancy. With our suspected light sensor, we wanted to try and make a basic line-following robot with only parts from the kit and commands from the software. An initial test of the light sensing capability, stopping a motor upon seeing a black line, seemed to work very well, so we thought this would be easy. Then we designed a chassis with a ratchet mechanism such that driving forward goes straight and driving backwards makes a turn. This behavior is standard for this kind of robot, but building it with such a small part selection was challenging. The chassis also seemed to work well, but then things went downhill. The motion sensor does not reliably get a 10 on black or a zero on white, and we do has no way to define a range of inputs. As such, we had to have separate threads triggering on each input to basically make a giant switch statement. Unfortunately, it seems like the threads interrupt each other as they trigger, and despite adjusting the ranges a few times, the robot would eventually drift over a line in a way it could not recover. Nonetheless, it did somewhat work at the start of each run, so we will call it a qualified success. It could not have run far no matter what because of the hub's wired connection. A final couple thoughts on the electronics. Since the hub runs on USB power, it maxes out at 5 volts, and the motors perform accordingly. With a multimeter hooked up to the hub, we can verify the maximum output voltage. With a motor hooked up to the same setup, we see a max speed of just over 200 RPM with our tachometer, uh, about half the max speed on 9 volts. Furthermore, even though the motor has a traditional stackable PF connector, the hub does not support having a motor and sensor on the same port. 
If we stack a sensor on top of a motor, the software gets confused and can't identify either device. This basically limits useful configurations to one motor and one sensor, though the app can sense sound through the host computer and use it to trigger code. The hub can also drive two motors, but the software does not seem to differentiate the two and simply runs them together. Anyway, that's the We Do Robotics construction set, a real footnote in LEGO history. The wired power makes it fairly unique among modern sets, though 2009 was quite a long time ago by now. We did look for a more sophisticated third-party software suite, but we did not find anything easy to set up. Let us know in the comments what else you want to see from this set, or what other power function sets you want us to review. On that note, this is the end of the video. Uh, please consider subscribing if you like what we do, and have a nice day.